Hey guys, today we're talking micro and macro. In this video, the spotlight is on Hoopa. Guys, we are almost at 400 subscribers. Help your local mom and pop store channel grow. Now, first thing to take into consideration is two things. What Pokemon your team is using and what are the item equipped. Getting intel on your team comp can help you predict the moveset they will most likely choose. Having this knowledge will determine what moves you will use. <clears throat> For example, if I was to place a hyperspace hole and my teammate has a move that makes it easy to miss the portal back to base, this would be a waste. I would recommend going trick <clears throat> because you provide shields and give them movement speed to engage or run away. Two, now this is the most important screen before the battle. Can you guess why? Leave your answer on the comments down below. For the first three minutes, my lane partner and I have to get our levels to where I have hyperspace hole and he has surf or shuriken. <clears throat> and I'm laning with elite bloomer, where Greninja's level 5 is not the best until he's level 7. These are my mental win conditions. If I reach them, this means we won our lane. When securing, you need to consider two things so that you have the upper hand. Positioning and secure. My partner backing up like this leaves me to secure against two enemy players as a supporter. Had my partner not backed up, I could have used Astonish to stun both enemy players since Confi needs to be close to their host. Then use Confusion to help secure. I too am at fault for using my moves prematurely, assuming the Bulbasaur was going to use their Razor Leaf to burn and Confi use Vine Whip, Vine Whip to help me secure with Astonishing Confusion. I was wrong. <coughs> Seeing my Greninja back up like this, I knew I couldn't count on him. To make up the farm they took, I wanted to see how comfortable this Bulbasaur was, having this Comfy around. Showing presence makes the opponent anticipate when will you use your secure move. I use two methods to force moves from the opponent. Method 1 is where I attack them directly. This will force them to either die for the farm or back away entirely. Or 2. I just stand there. This creates a scary movie factor <clears throat> where they are anticipating my moves to the point they will overthink using their moves. As Hoopa, I have the ability Magician. This move allows me to spawn a berry at random or coins if none are left in the arena. I choose to spawn the berry here because in the event I get ganked, we have three berries to work with, and they have one. This is planning ahead. If we win their gank, we have the option to counter push and KO them easier. Them having one berry as opposed to them having two chances to restore their HP. I got my hyperspace hole. Nice. This move is a great support tool. Just as it's a great support tool, it's also a great damage dealing tool. It's a little bit but it's damage nonetheless. You deal enough damage, you get a KO. Every tier has a set percentage of shield it grants. The closer the tier is to the base, the greater the shield. At these levels, the shield could have very well have been half my HP, giving me a little more room to live to defend my lane. Keeping a close eye on Magician, I can keep a constant flow of HP for both my teammate and I. This is why I was able to use Hyperspace Hole as an offensive move instead of using it to go back to base and recalling, wasting massive time. Tier 2 shields was more than enough to keep us fighting. It's 821. 
and their jungler is still thirst trapping. He will be very late for his rotations on central area. He will be very late for central Altarias, and he will be late for 720 Altarias. Exploit the jungler's mistakes and capitalize on them. Getting a KO on him will give us levels and time we lost fighting him. Make no mistake, this is a levels game. Don't forget the win conditions we set before the start of the match. Farm is everything. This is another mistake the enemy team did. The Zacian could have distracted us for that long, while the Ivysaur could have farmed all the minions in the field, getting huge levels and setting up to claim mid Altarias to get his second ability. He already has Confei. Getting Petal Dance and Giga Drain would have completed all the pieces to make Exodia. This Ivysaur is panicking. How do I know this? He is using his moves with the farm being at full HP. He is not thinking straight. Capitalize on this mistake and punish them. Having this intel, I go to their side of the farm and carefully wait for more mistakes to arise. Then I make my way out. Here, I make it very clear that this 2v3 doesn't concern me. You can tell by this satisfied giggle. <laughs> Clearly, all three enemy players are emotional on how things are turning out. They got a Zacian, Petal Dance Venusaur, and a Comfy. They are asking, why haven't we broken the darn goal yet? All they got is a lame Greninja and an annoying Hoopa. If one of your teammates are emotional and you follow their lead in a push you know they lost before, would you do it again? Their emotional decision making may cost you a lot if you follow them. In this case, we have a goal of 53 HP. They lost three members and we got to score huge, leaving their goal at 20 HP. The goal now is to reach level nine. My team pushing like this can cripple me heavily. I don't have damage like Gren or Talon, so defending Go will be next to impossible. I rush to put a portal to take them back to base, restoring their HP. I needed some of these mid farm to get level 9. My biggest mistake here was not dying on pad and farming this ball toy for my level 9 for my unite. Now that I have my unite, I rush top lane while Venusaur and Comfy are still bot. My team seems to be passive because of Zacian and Decidueye zoning for him. I needed to cripple the Decidueye, at the very least leave him low enough to recall so that we can get position. If I go down, then so be it, 
At least I gave position for my team and a portal for all of them to be present. This is a 2v5 situation. All of the enemy team is here. And they are determined to make this push happen. My lane partner and I will do our best to stall for my team to come from base. My main focus is to keep my Greninja alive. Whether it's getting aggro off of him or damaging enemy squishies for easier KOs for my Greninja. After we won the battle, we started attacking Regileki. This Gudra and I will provide cover support to make it very difficult for the enemy team to contest the Regileki. I messed up my hyperspace hole and Phantom Force combo. Against a more knowledgeable player, I would have gotten myself KO'd. Going back to top lane, I went straight for the Decidueye to stop him from zoning down my teammates. This will make it easier for my team to deal with the Venusaur. I'd say I can outlast this Decidueye long enough to KO the Venu. The plan here is to have the Venu back off from my tier 1 goal and focus me down. Luckily, he was solo, I was able to claim a KO. This was more of a statement. Letting this Decidueye player know I'm onto you. I know how you want to play this game, and I will be there to punish your playstyle. When going against a Zacian player, or Zacian, I try to bait out the double sacred sword move. You making it easy by walking their way, they will use the move. Simply shimmy them or dash away, causing them to miss. They will be vulnerable for 5 seconds. Is my lack of character knowledge. My portal was up and I didn't think to use the ability to quickly teleport us to bot Reggie. This all comes with learning the character. Decidueye with no eject makes for easier pickings. This Decidueye can't simply ignore me. At some point. He's going to have to acknowledge me, acknowledge my presence. And how do you make them acknowledge you? By zoning them harder than them. I got so much aggro, they forgot who the real carries are, which was my Greninja in this case. He got the KO on both Decidueye and Trevenant. Remember, I'm only the support. The moment I saw the Venusaur protect this Comfy, I placed a hyperspace hole in range where I can damage the Comfy, possibly stopping the score. If I didn't, I could just take the portal to base and guard tier 2. Seeing the enemy Decidueye and Zacian were badly positioned, I thought it would be a great opportunity to secure Rayquaza. Use Phantom Force to make it easier to score. The pushing and shoving helps cancel certain moves, like Spirit Shackles charging. Then set a portal to make a clean getaway. All that's left is to defend. I am choosing not to unite for two reasons. To unite later is to run down the clock and to bait this Venusaur to fight on pad so that when my team jumps down, they stun him. We are almost at 400 subscribers. I know we can pull through. At 1,000 subscribers, I will start making face cam videos. Let's do it, guys.